Phase 4 is here and that means the Priebus grind has finally begun. But this Priebus grind is way different than it was back in 2019. I've hit level 60, I'm working really hard in my Priebus and I've learned a ton of secrets. I can't wait to share everything I've learned in my ultimate Priebus farming guide that we're about to get into right now. So Priebus farming in Phase 4, it has some really big changes. We're going to cover exactly what you need to do to get your gear as fast as possible. We're also going to cover the three new and updated vendors that have so many new Priebus items you won't want to miss out on. We'll also be talking 0.5 dungeon sets. And of course we've got to talk about the PvP gear that came out, and the Ultrac Valley gear and how to get it way faster. So in 2019, your Priebus farming, it was very much Atlas loot, Wowhead Priebus list. You made your own 60 upgrades list ideally, and then you would go to all these different dungeons and you would power farm for a specific item. So let's say I needed a piece from Strat Home. I would just do like five or ten Strat Homes in a row back to back. And that was basically how we all got our Priebus back in the day. Jump ahead to Phase 4 though, and Priebus farming is way different. Sure, we still have the Atlas loot, the Wowhead Biss list, we still have our 60 upgrades. But there's one major difference, because instead of going to Strat Home and just grinding an item for hours and hours, we're now really incentivized to do these world tours because there's this brand new currency dropping from every boss in the endgame dungeons, and that's a currency you really don't want to miss out on. So let's talk about these new tarnished undermine reals. That's the currency you're getting from all the endgame bosses. Every single boss is going to drop a real, but only once per day, so you're really incentivized to zip around to all the different dungeons. So current estimates, if you do all the different endgame dungeons, that includes Stratholme, that includes the Demon Falls Canyon dungeon, be about 83 reals per day. Talking about that new dungeon for a second, it provides quite a few Priebus pieces. For example, there's a trinket that gives 80 strength activatable. Looks very, very strong for enhanced shamans. I'll link a guide with all the new loot in the new dungeon and a very easy attunement process as well, so you can get in that dungeon as soon as possible. So back to the Tarnished Undermine Reals. You're going to be turning these in at Pix and Booty Bay. The items she sells are really impressive. There are huge weapons. There are very strong idols and totems. Seems like Blizzard put about two items per class that you really want to focus on. So while you're blasting your Priebus using these Tarnished Undermine Reals, you're also going to want to make sure you hit up the Blackrock Eruption event at least once per day. Most of these quests are around the level 55 range, so you're going to want to make sure you get there as quickly as possible on all your different alts. So when we were doing this event, we were able to grab 8 different quests at Thorium Point, and each of these quests gave around 9,000 experience, and you also got around 200 Thorium Brotherhood and Hydraxian Waterlord rep as well. So the event you're doing, it starts on every even hour, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. These really are just fancied up incursions and you can easily ride around with a group of five random people and knock them out in about 20 to 30 minutes. So the important item you're getting when you turn these dailies in is the Firelands Ember. This is an item you take to Loctos and the Grim Guzzler. He'll sell you these insane Priebus items like the Tempered Black Amnesty, which gives you 30% threat reduction. The catch though is that you need a crafter to make the original base items, and then you combine those with the Firelands Embers to make these really souped up versions. A lot of these items you need to craft, they cost up to 25 of these embers, but the problem is you can only make 11 embers per day, so you're really going to want to go on all your different alts, all your characters, and try to get all these dailies done every single day. Some casters, for example, they might want the full Flare Core set and the Tempered Black Amnesty, so it would take at least 9 days of dailies to get all those different items. Really, getting as many embers as possible should be your number one priority in Phase 4. We also haven't talked about the updated Arjun Dawn vendor. Quartermaster Miranda, she sells all these upgraded Priebus epics. For example, she has my Priebus shoulders that I desperately want. The idea is that you take a crafted blue and you combine it with strat home items like the frayed stitching. The catch is that all these blue items are bind on pickup, so you're going to have to drop a lucrative profession like alchemy if you want to make them. It's a devious trick by Blizzard, at least for me, I really want to get my shoulders, but I have to drop my alchemy, which I spent so much money leveling up. So talking about professions and leveling them up, one of the big aspects of Phase 4 Priebus is the crafted items. 
The crafted BOEs like Height of the Wild, for example, or just the Dungeon Drops, the three pieces of your tier 0.5 set. These items are really going to be a big gold sink for you. So I would highly recommend, if you can, I would farm or buy the materials and then take them to a guild crafter to craft them for way less money. Also, a pro tip, if you're really strapped for gold and you want to get these items, the Tardis Undermine Real vendor, she is kind of a gold printer. With five Undermine Reals, you can turn them in for damaged goods. And inside the box could be something like five Winterfall Firewaters, which is exactly what I got. So you can imagine if you had, say, 15 of these boxes a day, you could get all sorts of crazy items, even Black Lotus, and you could really pay for a lot of your crafted items that way. Now, previous farming in Classic, it really wouldn't feel right unless we were doing our Tier 0.5 set farming as well. The idea is to start by farming your Tier 1 dungeon set, so in my case, the Devout set. To save you some time, there are three viable pieces for your Tier set, and that's the Bracer, the Belt, and the Gloves. The rest is going to be coming from different dungeons like Ubers, which you're already going to be hopefully doing because of the real currency. As for the questline itself, you have so many busy work activities to do. There are gold things, there's a lot of travel and killing mobs. I'm going to link a guide below the video that's going to get you your tier 0.5 as quickly as possible, zero stress. So while you guys are blasting phase 4 content, I have my own terrible dark secret activity that I'm going to be doing. I'm actually going to be in Sunken Temple going back to farm my Prebus necklace because a lot of different classes, they still have Prebus items from Sunken Temple. The good news, though, is that you can now do Sunken Temple twice a week. So there's a Tuesday lockout reset and a Saturday lockout reset. So if you're missing some items, at least until Molten Core comes out, I definitely recommend going back to Sunken Temple. And while you're doing that, it really wouldn't be right to talk about Prebus without at least covering Ultrac Valley and the PvP grind as well. So pretty much every class has at least something they want from AV Exalted. In my case on my Priest, I want the Lay of the Life Giver for Abyss Offhand. A really nice perk of getting AV Exalted is that at the exact same time you're going to be ranking up in PvP. There are some newly upgraded pieces from PvP for rank 8 and rank 10. They're not really pre bis but they have a lot of stamina, so if you want to do any PvP, they're definitely a good bet. So after all this discussion about these crazy new systems, the item farming, the dungeon farming, the big takeaway I have about Prebus farming is that it's actually easier than it ever has been before. You really just have to find a group of five players, you knock out as many dungeons as humanly possible, and you're going to be Prebus'd up in no time at all. And personally, I would love to hear your thoughts on all the big changes. I know some top players are really not happy that they reworked the Prebus grind, because a lot of people think it's the best part of Classic. Also, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to keep it here and subscribe for way more guides in the future. Then click on my huge DPS tier list video next so you can build the perfect raid comp for Phase 4.